Well, all right. Now we are going to talk about BMC software and some of their new announcements. I know that um, you know the company announced some new capabilities targeted helping clients harden security, modernize app development, and and also achieve some greater visibility across the IBM Z platform, which I know that you're very familiar with, and then also focused on promoting an open and collaborative mainframe. So talk to us a little bit. This is about a year past the time that BMC acquired its longtime collaborator, CompuWare. So talk to us a little bit about these announcements coming out of BMC and what you yeah, see. Yeah, I, th- I think the most interesting thing, and you just mentioned CompuWare there, they're almost exactly to the day a year on from closing right. the acquisition yeah. I, th- I think the interesting thing for me is and, and watching the two organizations closely over that interim year it's been still bmc and compuware they've been using both brands chris o'malley the former ceo of compuware you know was very vocal for the probably the first six or seven months still out there as a cheerleader for his or prior organization I think what was really interesting for me that came out of this was it was very clear that this was the first BMC-driven announcement of their new capabilities. And I think it's going to be interesting to see how they tidy up that brand branding. Some of the former DevOps tools from CompuWare have still got CompuWare in the name of the product. Right. So it's going, to be, it's going to be interesting as they clean that up from a branding point of view. But I think what was interesting for me was – one of the things that CompuWare used to be really vocal about, and and those in the mainframe space know Chris and Mally uh, hasn't got a particular style for being vocal. Right. Um, one of the things that was really interesting of how they used to position themselves was we're doing quarterly updates. The mainframe space has obviously been around for decades. Right. And, and they took a strategic opinion that they were going to update their products every quarter. It's interesting for me to see BMC – adopt that same re- release schedule yeah. so it's kind of a merging of the best of both worlds from bmc and CompuWare, which i think is encouraging um for the mainframe community that the good things from CompuWare haven't been dropped as bmc have taken them over and it's really a fusing of the two pieces yeah, that is really interesting. You know, one of the things that I uh, paid particular attention to, of course, coming out of this announcement is, you know, uh, focusing on security, right? And, you know, protecting the platform from malicious insider threats. So, you know, let's talk a little bit about why this is so important today. You know, we've got the solar winds attack that we're still reeling from, and we've got the JBS attack, the global meat producer, and we've got this week's Revel attack on Casia, an IT management software that's designed for MSPs and IT teams. And, and, why, why that's particularly important, at least to me anywhere, of interest to me anyway, is because, you know, when we talk about, you know, the solar winds attack was and is so relevant because of all of the many government vendors that the solar winds software platform served, right? So the the Casia, 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 I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right. Um, Your good, yeah. guess is as good as mine, Shelley. I, <laughs> I, I wrote the piece on the Revel, Revel right. attack and I don't right. know how it's I would say so. I would say Kaseya. So we'll that's, go with how, that. that's how we'll I'm go going with to that. say it, by gosh. <laughs> so, you know, many of Kaseya's customers are companies who are in the small to mid-sized space who don't want to mess with or aren't able to mess with all that's involved in terms of IT, managing their IT systems and everything else, which is great. That's the beauty of working with managed service providers, right? They mm-hmm. bring the expertise, they bring the IT skill, they bring the capabilities, the infrastructure, all that sort of thing. But when you have an attack on the software provider that provides these services, that is a very big deal. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, so anyway, so how does, you know, this focus on security from a BMC standpoint, you know, what jumps out at you there? I know that we've got some new options within BMC AMI security. You know, how does that work? Why does it matter so much? Well, I think there's a misnomer that the mainframe, it, you know, whatever you say about the mainframe, it's got a rightfully earned reputation as a very secure platform. But I think it'd be a misnomer that you don't have to do work to back up that reputation. Right. You know, whilst it's – and I know the security professionals say it's the most securable 
platform rather than the most secure platform. And, and they make that distinction because you still do have to do work. And I think even though the mainframe is typically buried behind DMZs and kept on purpose as a system of record away from public facing internet, you've still got to secure it. And I think what was interesting for me about the BMC piece was that they were making that distinction and specifically going after one threat um, vector for me, which is that insider threat. You know, these are highly credentialed individuals that are got, in a lot of cases, quite elevated access rights to do big actions on the mainframe. And as that's a system of record, a database team or a system administration team can really have access to the crown jewels of information. That's typically what a mainframe has running on it. It will be the system of record for a bank or an insurance company or a a large government department with a lot of PII data typically on it. So I think focusing on those highly credentialed super users, further locking down and providing um, monitoring software of what those users are doing and looking for nefarious actions is really important. And I, I was really interested to see BMC kind of play into the noise that's going in the on in the industry around the cyber security space. But yeah. I mean that was that was an obvious ploy. But I think what was more interesting is they've not just gone after the marketing headlines. Right. They've really gone and done the product development work to further add yeah. capability to what's a very mature space, but add further capability into that space because it's needed. And, and I thought that was really encouraging. What I mean, there's a lot of detail in the piece, and we'll put the, the link to my coverage in the show notes. But I think it was really interesting to see they've gone and done that hard R and D and engineering work and the development work to further bolster those uh, sysadmin type tools. So no, that was, it was really sort of interesting for them to go below the marketing hype right. and, and, and really talk about some of the hard right. hard development work they've done in that space. Smart and strategic. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what I thought when I read yeah, it. Definitely. So I want to wrap up our conversation about BMC's announcements with, you know, I want to touch on the open mainframe. I know that's one of your passions. <laughs> Subject and, to my heart. Absolutely. So talk a little bit about that, if you would. Well, it's, it, it's a really interesting dynamic, the world that's going on in the mainframe world right now. Obviously, the platform has been around for coming up on 60 years. It, it's been probably the poster child in its early um, de- few decades as, for proprietary, you know, closed source, very big vendors providing software for that space. Right. But over the last five or six years, the platform's gone through a real transformation. Um, embracing open source as, as a way to crowdsource code. Um, and the Open Mainframe Project, which is a Linux Foundation collaborative project, is kind of really leading that charge. And it, it's interesting for me to see BMC announcing with so much pride their membership of the Open Mainframe Project um, right. because I think there's, there's a f- re- relatively small number of vendors in the mainframe space and I think it's really directionally important that that space gets more collaborative, that some of the competitive pieces where there's not need for comp- competition really become a collaborative effort. And I know one of the big areas there is Zoe. So BMC has been on the fringes of looking at this space for the last three or four years. It's really encouraging for that space overall to see what is now the the sort of third biggest software vendor jump in with both feet into that open source community and really start to push forward. Because if the mainframe is going to be around for the next 60 years, it needs to be an open platform and it needs to embrace open source. It, It can't be like it was in the last 60 years. So I think that is directionally important for where that platform goes and as it continues to be that system of record for you know thousands of large organizations around the world open is going to be a key phrase in that space i knew that was part of that news (laughs) that would make you very happy definitely (laughs) absolutely hold that project still still dear to my heart shelly absolutely and and long will be yes I'm still the host of their podcast show. 
So, I, uh, and you know what? We'll put the link to that show in our show notes as well. So if that, like Stephen, that is your passion, you will be <laughs> able to track what he's doing there in that space. So that's awesome. 